nobody builds anything anymore. Yeah. And then they look at you like you're a crazy person if you do. You do. <laughs> you were the only person building a boat up here in Napa, huh? <laughs> yeah, I took a lot of grief. Yeah. <laughs> People that work, you know. How's that boat going? <laughs> oh, you know, you're never going to get it done. How are you going to get it out of there? Yeah. I got a plan. I have a plan. <laughs> <laughs> You're coming too. From Washington State to now sunny California. We've been at it for five years. It began with selling our previous boat and taking that money to buy tools and build a shed. We assembled keel pieces, poured the ballast, and raised all 16 frames in the first six months. There's a boat in there. Now, half a decade later, and at a slower but steady pace, we're in the water. We're salt and tar, and this is our life. Like, subscribe, and support if you can. For this episode, we're going to travel back in time. Mm -hmm. To when we first met Charlie. We were in the middle of installing the channels for the rig and our big cabin remodel. I see you narrowed it. Yeah. Go through a little <laughs> modification. It took me over 24 years to build mine. It wasn't a... Oh, yeah continuous thing. I'd lay off for a year or two and then get back on it. Yeah. Charlie's a fellow backyard boat builder and found us through a local newspaper article. He came to check out the project and got dirty with us. Ready. Oh, oh that's actually yeah. a lot better. All right. Charlie's known us now through yeah. many hairstyles. Long dreads, short, medium, and even pink. He's given us buckets of tools and gear. He's made all 200 plus of our apparel beads. Look at all these, these. So oh fun. my goodness. <laughs> and helped us figure out our dead eyes. Charlie first started with driving us out to where he and his wife built their boat and where he still has some storage. So what year did you guys start building the boat? I think we finished the house in about 74. A couple of years after that. But it, late, late 70s. How many years to launching? Well, I worked on the boat at least 24. Yeah. But I had to uh, build a shed to build the boat in, mm -hmm. all that kind of stuff, prior to... Yeah, it's amazing how much goes into building a boat besides <laughs> just the yeah. building the boat part. Yeah, absolutely. I still think it's incredible you brought the boat down on that road. Yeah. That's amazing. That's impressive. <laughs> Wow. Oh, those are sweet. Three of those, those are brand new. He had to get us a bucket and kept coming out with goodies. Yeah, I think those are the best score. Those are so sweet. Charlie machined a bunch of his boat gear and gave us the excess. Two corners, are you in How big is your boat? 38 feet. Oh man, that's crazy. He reminisced about how 15 years ago, he watched his life's work of 24 years come around sharp corners down this very road. We had given him pieces of locust months back as he insisted on pitching in. The process of making the apparel beads. Oh, awesome. You know, kind of where it starts, where it goes. And this is what he made for Red Aviva. So that to that to that. That. So what is that? Paro beads are how a traditional gaff sail rides up and down the mast. Some choose to build hoops, but beads just made more sense for us. We're using black locust, which grew locally where we began building. And it is tough. That's pretty cool. If you want to take a video, we can make 
make one of these. It's yeah, really that'd be idea. awesome. Yeah. <laughs> well, let's see if I can remember to do it. <laughs> Every once in a while, I, I You've only it. done 200. <laughs> yeah. Well, you're doing us a huge favor <laughs> by doing all these. These are awesome. Okay. In here. This is old fashioned. You get kicked out of this. <laughs> <laughs> What are they called? Pearl? Pearl beads. Pearl. Pearl beads. I don't know why I always I think they just look like pearls because they're just as pretty. <laughs> <laughs> Pearl beads. Yeah, look at I love how the grain really comes out. Yeah. You know. Yeah. They they do machine really well, the black locust. Huh. Only a Beautiful. few more to make. <laughs> <laughs> Fill out the box. Very cool. When I was uh, really into this, I could make twenty and a half. In an hour. <laughs> <laughs> He's going to get a speed rush, you know, going. Yeah. <laughs> Dad bought it right after the war, I think, uh, 48 or 49. That's awesome. And he was a tool and dive maker. So he had to have a lathe at home. Yeah. yeah. So. Charlie is a kind-hearted, generous man and has become a part of Red Aviva's story. But what about his story? The boat he built. We're uh, going over to talk to Charlie and I think his wife's going to be there too. Um, but. It uh, will be really cool. We've been dying to see some pictures of the boat that they built and launched from the very same dock that we launched Red Aviva from uh, just a couple weeks ago. So, we're actually, oh shoot, it's been months. Anyway, uh, yeah, let's go check it out. Hey man, let's get it. So, my daughter's father in law loaned this. Video camera to make a uh, make a video of the boat. This was in oh three, I think. Hot when we got down in the water. I told you. Huh? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, this is this is our driveway down the hill. Well, first, we had to take the front off the shed. It's so still amazing to me so how you got it down that windy street. Yeah. It's really something when you yeah. hear the old grinding, grinding on the <laughs> on the truck. Down there. Yeah. Look older than I do now. <laughs> <laughs> There's more than 22. This is the boat. The day before the big truck comes. We still do not have a wheel, guys. Do, do you have a plan for that? <laughs> okay. <laughs> We're hearing serious motor noises. Let's see what's coming up the driveway. Okay, here it is. Here's a truck. There are so many parallels between our experiences, even down to the very same stride Garrett and Charlie have. Okay, so the first part of the operation is to jack up the boat. So they put those under it, and then we pulled it out. Oh man. This is it. It's right out of the shed. Some action there. Yeah. 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 Oh, 
<laughs> oh my god. Okay, <laughs> the boat's moving. Here she comes around the corner on the steep part of the road. I had to put a frame on my pickup and, and drove up and down the road and cut. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. Lens up. <laughs> Wide load and all. Here he goes. There's the boat. I'm gonna get in right behind him. There you go, Red Aviva. Wow, is that hot? Yeah. Wow. That's cool. Do you get to ride in with the boat? Yeah. That's awesome. Chris and me. It'd be really neat to have a you guys will have a video camera when you go out. Yeah. That'll be neat. And the people, you know, they don't, they don't, they won't believe. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Charlie purchased plans for his Bruce Roberts Offshore 38. Black and white film. <laughs> for 500 bucks. Working for Kaiser Steel, he naturally chose to build in steel. Kind of reminds me of a Johnny Cash song. I did it one piece at a time, and it wouldn't cost me. Laying out the, the, uh, Plates. What thickness plate was the uh, bottom? Three sixteenths. Mm -hmm. Must have been pretty crazy, like getting some of the first panels on and it just yeah. covering yeah. half the boat almost. <laughs> wow. Did you have many friends helping you, or is it mainly um, single-handed? When I, when I needed them, or when I, you know, I I could have them come up and help me, and then the, the, some of the welder guys I paid them, they were up yeah. so much. Yeah. Know, but, uh, then I finally had to buy some bolt jewelry. Now those 20 foot long sheets on the side of the boat, did you do some of those by yourself or? Yeah, most of them. Yeah, oh my goodness. <laughs> yeah, you had just about the same amount of headroom we did <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. in our shed. <laughs> and in the engine, I was gonna, I was gonna do it myself. I was gonna go through the shed with it, but I says, hell, we'll just, just hire a crane. Up there. <laughs> like what we did, we cut a hole in the top of our shed. Yeah, and, and for a hundred bucks. Oh my goodness. Yeah, you came up and down yeah. and for a hundred bucks. Yeah. And then look around for a while for a finger catches that were released. Oh yeah. And we had that there. Then we had the mass delivered in as a kit, and it just went together like a like a watch. We got a yeah. beautiful machine to work on. Wow. Charlie and his wife cruised down to Mexico for a few years. Now they're back in Napa, and Zester's current owner continued where they left off and jumped the puddle to the South Pacific. A couple weeks later, we work on our first project together, the Dead Eyes. That looks great. Pull against this one. This one's fixed. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there's a bunch of different ways to do it. A lot of people do um, up over the trail. Yeah. Anyway, Which I think I'll probably end up doing that. So I made these half inch, mm -hmm. and I made my little jig for half inch. Yeah, I think everything that I read it said do like a third over the diameter of the lanyard, yeah. and so I think I'm going to do three eighth inch lanyards. Okay. So well, that's that's close. Yeah, that's close enough. That's perfect. Yeah, and then the yeah. only other things I read is that on the uh, so you let in all of them except for the one that you make fast, which is exactly what you did. Yeah. Nice. 
Cool. And then I made this one for a strap, but I was thinking we were going to reduce the thickness of it. The dead eyes are how we tension our rig. The bottom dead eye will attach to our chain plates, which are attached to the hull. And the top dead eye is where our shrouds wrap around, which is what you saw us make a few episodes back. I always get them up, upside down. That's <laughs> Charlie's worked out the kinks so we can streamline production. He's made a template and a jig, and we're still using Black Locust, which started as long boards, then cut down into square blocks. Using the template, we mark the orientation and placement of the holes. Drill press, then band saw to remove the corners. Then comes in the lathe that gets us to rough round. But the router, finishes us smooth. This is just day one, but up next, we catch day one up to day two. A year later and back to our current timeline where we're ready to rig. Thanks for watching. Not to live for fun, your brain gets smart, but the heck it's dumb. So much to do, so much to see, so what's wrong with taking the back streets? You never know if you don't go. Hey, you never shine if you don't glow. Hey! Okay. <laughs> now that you've had that lovely musical interlude, we're on our way. Hey now. Stop! <laughs> <laughs> Not funny anymore. See, I told you the park was down the street. No, you were totally wrong. You said go the other way and then take a left and yeah, then whatever. and then go further from the, their I'll house. Focus on the details. I told you the park was down the street. Did you remember its address? It's the house <laughs> up here on the right. Such a good, why are you, you, so you have mean? such a good memory, don't you just know? Why are you so mean? I'm not mean to you. You keep interrupting me. Whatever. Yeah. Okay, so it wasn't that house, it's this one up here. <laughs> 